Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, Long War of the Chosen, the guides. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at the sniper. Before we start with the class, as always, the shameless self-plug. If you enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe and or leave a nice comment down below. With that being said, let's look into the sniper as a class, uh, which um, is really the spin-off of um, the pure sniper class in um, the classical XCOM, but more focused on range combat only, almost completely removing the pistol tree. Instead, they got an offhand, which is now called Holo Targeter, helping others uh, to, um, uh, to hit targets better. One of the uh, striking features of the class, though, is it still can take off-hand um, weapons, sidearms um, as pistols, which isn't too bad, um, but it definitely plays more like a long-ranged version of the sniper. A sniper starts out with the ability to hold a target and squad side as a standard, even as a squaddy. Um, and then we're now going through the three uh, tier uh, or three different paths, which is sniper, kind of the utilization of uh, hold a targeter, hold a targeter in the middle, and marksman, which is really more. Um, the um, an, an ability to either use rifles or um, a sniper in a sort of mediocre or medium uh, distance. As you can see, there is no clear like one path that is uh, perfect for the sniper. Um, but since the sniper is so very very focused on dealing damage, um, it comes at a couple of typical limitations for those classes. Number one, uh, if your sniper has a low aim, well, that's pretty bad for you because the only option that you really have is either increase the aim via various means or uh, go down the whole targeting round and hope for the best. Uh, that's really it. Um, the class, unfortunately, has no true support tree, although the kind of rapid targeting and multi-targeting makes it somewhat okay and gives everyone an aim bonus. Uh, that being said, if you're playing a um, uh, whole targeting sniper, it's... It's okay, and that's the best you will get out of it. Uh, nothing, really nothing more to say about it. Um, however, uh, if you do have a sniper with high aim, on the other hand, uh, the class can be incredibly devastating. So I would uh, say um, in its peak role, which is sniping, the class absolutely excels and does exactly that. Um, starting with Lance Corporal, uh, the class gets Death from Above, which is fantastic um, for various uh, reasons, um, specifically with the action economy um, abilities uh, that are given from officers. Uh, the class, even with a standard rifle, could kill someone, gets uh, regains one uh, point, can then uh, regain um, uh, another point from an officer or from a bondmate and continue to take a second shot right from the get-go on level one in Esalan's uh, corporal. Uh, rapid targeting, on the other hand, allows you to uh, target uh, uh, the an enemy uh, with uh, free action. You know how valuable free actions are. So it's actually quite good ability and could almost rival death from above. If you have a low aim, that's definitely the way to go. And finally, snapshot. You can take standard shots with your rifle after moving, but you uh, suffer a pretty severe um, penalty to do so. So the marksman is really kind of that run and gun type of of sniper um, and this here is an okay ability if you want to play the sniper more in the midfield um, however it is outshined by the other two abilities next up uh, corporal rank damn good ground flat up uh, bonus which definitely is b plus tier i like the 10 aim and 10 defense the only reason why i haven't skilled it is because um, you get uh, such a nice uh, aim progression and if you hit your targets um, anyways without them uh, good ground, uh, you might want to instead take uh, other uh, options such as center mask. Uh, Phantom um, gives uh, you the ability to almost use the sniper as a sort of scout um, because uh, you could run around and continue marking targets uh, whilst being um, uh, whilst being uh, in stealth. So that's, I guess, the way to play the character class, kind of more as a recon scout uh, type of character with a strong focus on uh, the uh, marking. Um, I would always um, prefer to go for the third one, which is center mass for various reasons, mainly uh, because 
it will give you that extra uh, damage and with many of the uh, abilities later you will see that you want to have that extra damage for multiple shots and so on and so forth. Precision shot in the sergeant rank, uh, pretty much what it uh, d did in classical XCOM, it allows you to take a shot uh, with uh, aim penalty but more bonus damage. Um, so it's a good ability um, if you want to deal uh, just one strong blow. And the reason why I haven't skilled it is because the later abilities um, are basically outshining the precision shot and therefore making it a bit redundant. Um, uh, high def hollow uh, targeting uh, basically gives a um, flat bonus to critical hit for every um, uh, target that is shooting at the target. This is nice together with uh, crit fishing builds such as the assault. So I can see that that is a valuable addition um, if you focus only on marking. However, Lone Wolf is probably the way to go here. 10 aim, 10 defense. And the only thing that you need to do is have seven tiles between you and one of your uh, members. This is just such an easy um, uh, stat boost. Uh, oftentimes at the beginning I ran Death From Above, Damn Good Ground and Lone Wolf. Those uh, together, Damn Good Ground and Lone Wolf give you a 20 aim bonus, 10 defense and another 10 defense. So you're looking at 20 defense uh, plus 20 aim, making all of the half cover essentially uh, full cover and uh, giving you all the right reasons to be at uh, higher elevation. Later, when you hit more targets, you can reskill just like I've done here and go for center mass for more damage. Next up, Steph Sergeant rank. Long watch allows you to trigger overwatch with a squad side. Definitely a good ability if you're into overwatching. Um, uh, second ability, independent tracking uh, that allows you to um, uh, basically have a holder targeted enemy remain holder targeted for one more round. Normally the holder targeting ends at the end of your turn, um, which uh, leads to many situations where you actually would want to uh, holder target something, but then you're not doing it because uh, the sniper is kind of the second last or third last person and you rather steady your weapon or um, begin to reload or something else. It's just not providing enough benefit, but with independent uh, tracking, uh, the holo targeting cannot only be made instantaneous. Uh, you can then also holo target multiple tar uh, targets um, after you've used it. Um, you could, uh, or you could um, uh, begin to um, holo target someone, take a shot, and next turn he's still holo target, and everyone gets a bonus uh, to critical strike. So I guess it is fine. Uh, there are minor bonuses for every uh, for everyone. Uh, what I'm missing here is probably the uh, the holder targeting ammunition because this rapid targeting plus a shot with holder targeting together would actually be quite good. That's double dipping and allowing everyone to take the bonus of holder targeting twice. Unfortunately, that doesn't exist. Anyway, St um, Staff Sergeant's uh, third option here is low profile, and low profile plus uh, the defense bonus from Lone Wolf are just phenomenal. The idea here was that the marksman is kind of that flanking um, move and uh, shoot sniper from half distance. Therefore, they gave him the low profile. In reality, uh, there is no such thing as enough cover. And um, if your sniper is somewhat in range of anything, you definitely want to give it um, uh, the benefit of full cover. Many of the high places only have half cover. It's great to have the option to always have full cover. On top of it, Lone Wolf gives you 10 extra defense. And in my specific case, I got Formidable on top of it, which just layers more hit points and 50% less damage from grenades. Um, so there is uh, there is that. That's really survivability, uh, first and foremost. Now let's come to the abilities that are um, actually a little bit more... Um, along the core set, uh, which is dealing damage. Dead Eye, single shot, significant damage boost, absolutely fantastic, I can uh, highly recommend it. It's a great ability. Uh, the Precision Shot doesn't have uh, that uh, pure damage bonus. It, um, it uh, just has a, a chance to better hit 
and a critical chance uh, bonus but the core damage isn't inflated as much as dead eye so that's why dead eye in my perspective is better and uh, supersedes the precision shot you will see that even the uh, future shots will be even better than dead eye vital point targeting um, uh, allow you to deal more damage against um, holder targets unfortunately it says attacks against um, uh, you hold a target at enemies. Oh no, it is a damage increase of everyone. Let me double check that. Yeah. Plus one, um, respectively plus two with improved holo targeting. So uh, that will increase the damage for everyone else. So that's uh, good support ability if you focus only on that. I have not skilled it because I'm seldomly holo targeting at all. It's damage uh, that is her main job. Aggression will um, is actually more important than you think because there's going to be a, a ability called Kubiriki, which we're uh, soon going to um, review. Uh, that requires you to um, to um, uh, to crit an enemy in order to kill it. Uh, Kubiriki. Let's maybe um, review the ability now so that it's clear. It's a special shot that can be taken. Um, it only deals half damage, but if the special shot is taken against an injured um, opponent uh, and is becoming a, a crit, it immediately kills uh, the um, enemy, which is why you want to improve your crit chance to 100% and, um, uh, use, uh, and basically uh, use a, uh, used against flank targets where the um, cover is removed and then you can simply crit them and uh, kill them. Uh, that however requires aggression so one of the things that I want to do with Hayward going forward again end game sort of reskilling is death from above into center mass lone wolf low profile then take the aggression because uh, more often than not you will need uh, Kubikiri uh, instead of the dead eye um, and the aggression will allow Kubikiri to crit almost always. Needless to say that Kubikiri for endgame uh, enemies such as the Gatekeeper and the Sectopod is an absolute phenomenal ability. It can deal effectively 50 points of damage because uh, you one-shot uh, the enemy. Um, on the targeting uh, front, you have multi-targeting, uh, which uh, allows you for the first time to, to basically target m more um, enemies. Combined with all of the other benefits, um, this is a nice support ability. And finally, Hunter's Instinct, uh, which allow your ranged attacks to deal two more damage against flanked um, enemies. If Kubikiri wouldn't be an A++++ ability, I would probably say Hunter Instincts is the way to go. Uh, in our uh, specific case, however, uh, this here just deals more damage and it's a pretty nice ability. Uh, on top of it, I was lucky enough to get hit and run, so uh, the first shot um, uh, will automatically give me an uh, action point um, and together with that from above, I can even get refunded twice. So double dipping there, making, uh, uh, making it even better. Um, finally, the Master Sergeant uh, rank this is an interesting one because you do have either double tap, which you can activate and then you can shoot twice. I think the cooldown is two rounds, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, one round cooldown. So you can use it every, sing uh, every second uh, turn. Uh, you can um, alternatively get Alpha Mike Foxtrot, which means four additional points of base damage with, with your primary weapon or serial, which um, I, you all know is the classical, <coughs> you begin to kill and kill and kill uh, sort of killing spree. Now, here's the line of argument that you need to uh, come to terms when you're playing a sniper. What is most likely to happen? Let's start with Serial. Yes, there is gameplay footage and I have encountered situations as well where you just have a, such a nice setup that you pop Serial and you kill one after the other, after the other, after the other. Okay, no problem. In that case, Serial would be good. Uh, given that there is a chosen sniper out there, uh, together with Death from Above, Serial, however, for absolute top-level snipers like A-Team snipers, would probably uh, fall flat compared to using Death from Above um, or Hit and Run um, um, or any combination of that. So in, in that case, Serial, I shouldn't 
uh, point out hit and run because you might not have that ability. So scratch the last comment. Death from above plus the uh, chosen rifle is better than serial. Serial can be game changing, but it is also pretty hit and miss. Five, six missions in a row, you might not even use it once. And then the one time it will save your mission. Alpha Mike Foxtrot, four points of damage. Absolutely fantastic. Will deal more damage um, uh, if needed. But think about it. Oh, you need that damage only with enemies where you <clears throat> don't want to where you want to one-shot them as, um, in a nutshell. And if you want to uh, uh, one-shot something, then Kubikiri is probably the better way to go. Double tap, on the other hand, means you can take two shots um, right from the get-go, and if you kill something with death from above, you can even continue to go, go, go. So the thing that I like about uh, double tap is it um, gives you every second round the agency to have that extra shot, it's a quick cooldown, so all of every single engagement that I'm playing, uh, it is available, and it pays so much dividends, uh, even um, in normal situations. It's just always there, and uh, you can uh, you can get a lot of damage out of that. Uh, imagining that on average now uh, she hits for 13, 14, 15 points of damage. That alone a crit uh, would be higher than that. Uh, double tap just doubles that and if you have reliable ways of getting rid of armor this is just much better than um, uh, Alpha Mike Foxtrot uh, as a single shot would be. So my take on the final sniper build death from above into center mass into lone wolf into low profile into aggression into kubikiri into double tap and I think I'm not mistaken, one of my other snipers even has that as the go-to build. Snipers, I um, I tend to have one uh, whenever possible in the missions because they just add so much uh, damage potential uh, once they are leveled. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, this here should be a fully skilled sniper. Yeah, there you go. That's the final build. Death from above to center mass, lone wolf, low profile, aggression, kubikiri. And why did I even take Alpha Mike Foxtrot here? I probably wanted to try it out. Double tap is better. So, yeah, that should be the final build. Anyways, I uh, talked uh, enough about the snipers. Thank you for watching, guys, and uh, see you in the next run. Bye bye.